basis for its apology is. Um, and so what's kind of the setting here? You have got uh, x is your set say, and you've got a topology on x. We've got this topological space when I think of those things together. Remember that t is just a bunch of things that come from the power set of x uh, that satisfy uh, those three axioms where, maybe just to, very quickly, I know that x and the empty set have to be two things that are in t. I know that any union of elements of t have to land in t. And I know that uh, any intersection of finitely many things from t at a time also have to land back in t. So those are the three topology axioms. And remember, what is a topology? These are the sets that satisfy those three things that I'm going to describe with the word open. Um, and so what is a basis for a topology then? Think about a basis for the topology as being what are like the building blocks for the things that are in t. So I'll try to write that down really quickly. Building blocks for t. And so to illustrate the definition, um, I want to kind of give an example. Uh, maybe I'll do the definition first and then I'll do an example uh, right with it there. And so I'm going to use fancy b to be a basis. So say b is a basis for t. Um, and so what is b? b is some, it's just some subset of t. It's just here is a handful of things from t that satisfy a certain property. Again, they're supposed to act like building blocks for the things that are in t. So we might call that a subcollection of t if you like. Um, um, if what we should be able to do is if uh, you took any anything that's open, in other words, any element of t, and let's say just for um, interest sake, say non-empty, it's not interesting if it's empty, any non-empty element of t, uh, what should we be able to do? We should be able to find some things from b, so then there exists some subcollection. I'll call it fancy b prime of b. So just, we should be able to pick a few things out of your, what your basis is say, call those few things B prime, such that the union of those things that are in B prime gives you U. So such that U uh, is equal to the union of regular B, such that regular B uh, was a part of the handful of things that you picked out of your basis. So let me try to illustrate with an example, what are we doing here? So here's a set, let's just say it's one, two, and three. And let's say, I'm gonna tell you that this is the topology. So of course I need the empty set next to be in there. So like the whole thing, one, two, and three. But then I'm gonna tell you that one is open and I'm gonna tell you that two, three together is open. And so in this case then, what I'll take for a basis for this topology then, Fancy B, I'm just gonna tell you about one and two, three. So I claim that one and two, three are like the building blocks of this topology. I should be able to describe anything out of this topology by just taking unions of a few things in here, or really as many things in there as I need to. And so this example isn't particularly interesting, but just to kind of illustrate what is this stuff saying here. So for anything, any non-empty thing that you had in your topology, you should be able to find things out of here that'll union together to make these things up individually. And so this example, like I said, is not super duper interesting just because, okay, if you're looking at the whole set X itself, maybe I'll use a highlighter. For X itself, sure, I'll take my subcollection B prime to just be everything out of B. Um, if I am just thinking about U, so if U is this set just one, I look at my basis B down here and oh, one's already in there. So I'll take that to just also be B prime. And then finally, um, if your U is two, three, then if I look at my basis B down here, well, I'll just take two, three to also act as my B prime. So that sure, two, three is equal to two, three. So the point though, is that again, you could build via unions, any set in your whole topology just by looking at these. I hope that that makes sense uh, why I'm calling that building blocks. Maybe uh, one more example that we run into a lot. Um, 
I think everybody's pretty comfortable with, you know, if X is the plane, so R2, and then D, you have a metric now, so we're going back to thinking about metric spaces and not these more general topological spaces. So D is the, you know, usual Euclidean metric. I'll say distance function, that seems a little more accessible. Um, so I can draw you a picture now. What we remember, remember, um, in a metric space, we had this concept of like what an open ball is. So in a metric space, um, you had these special open sets called, you know, open balls. And uh, just to remind you, if you had a particular point, say X that's in your set, little x, say, and we use this notation B, D, X, say epsilon, where epsilon represents like the radius of your ball. And then this was like the center. It's been a while since you thought of that and radius. And so like, what is this then? This is the set of say all Y that are also in there such that, you know, the distance between X and Y, the center and Y is smaller than epsilon. And so what I'm thinking about then is, okay, if I'm in the plane, uh, what are some open sets that are in the plane? Uh, so one of them I could look at, I'll draw you a picture now. What if I just took say the first quadrant, not including either of the axes here. So let's say all this red is U. And so, you know, U is equal to the set of all points X comma Y, such that, uh, how would I describe that? X is larger than zero and Y is larger than zero. So what I claim is this U U is open according to the definition of what it means to be open in a metric space. Just to remind you of that, if you took any point, let's say this is a little x here, is it possible to find one of these balls that's completely contained in the red? And uh, sure, I could definitely find a real number small enough so that this little disc or this little circle, whatever you wanna say, is completely contained in the first quadrant. There's no problem with that at all. And you could do that wherever I put that green dot. So that should convince you that U is open. Um, and so my point then is that U itself isn't one of these special open sets, right? But it can be built up from these special blue open sets. And so the whole point of this little part here is that these guys, these open balls that we in some way know and love, they form a basis for the usual topology that comes along with this distance function. And so I'll write that down. So BD X epsilon uh, forms a basis for the usual um, Euclidean topology on, apologies, hard to spell, <laughs> on Rn. And so in my case, I used R2. You know, there's nothing special about R2. We have the same kind of idea for R3, R4, R100, whatever you're doing. And so again, the idea, I could think about this red as, um, you know, for any one of these points that you give me, I'll call this one Y now, well, I could put a ball around it. And so what I'm trying to get you to think of is, what if I took the union of all these little blue balls here? If we took the union of all such little balls, you would end up making the red. And so that's what I mean by trying to get across to you the idea that, you know, given any open set, one of these red things, you could think of it as the union of these little building blocks, which are the things from your basis.